My name is Dr. Kieran Judge, and I would like to welcome you all to the GI Physiology Lab in the Mercy University Hospital, Cork. Hi, I'm Dr. Martin Buckley, a consultant gastroenterologist at the Mercy University Hospital and the clinical director of the GI Lab. Hi, my name is Lucy Quinlevin. I'm a senior GI physiologist in the Mercy University Hospital, Cork. My name's Aidan Carr. I'm a clinical measurement physiologist here in the GI Lab at the Mercy Hospital. My name is Julie O'Neill. I'm a clinical physiologist here in the GI lab in the Mercy Hospital. This laboratory has been functioning since 2007 and receives nearly 2,000 referrals per year. We currently offer the latest in esophageal impedance and manometry, anorectal manometry, video capsule endoscopy and breath testing including for pancreatic enzyme insufficiency. Through this video we aim to educate both patients and doctors about certain conditions that can cause distressing GI symptoms and what we can do to fix them. We will discuss the mechanisms of normal belching, supragastric belching, rumination syndrome and resistant reflux. Advances in physiological testing mean we can now effectively diagnose these conditions through esophageal high resolution impedance and manometry. Afterwards we will then demonstrate and discuss the treatment of these conditions using the technique of diaphragmatic breathing. Each section will have an animation describing the pathophysiological processes involved in each condition, as well as an example of a high-resolution impedance and manometry study to help illustrate the mechanisms involved. Please feel free to watch the entire video or to skip to the relevant section using the progress bar or the bookmarks below. Normal belching. Belching normally occurs as part of a physiological venting system. Gas accumulating in the proximal stomach stimulates stretch receptors, which causes a vagal reflex, resulting in a transient lower esophageal sphincter relaxation. This allows a sudden expulsion of gas upwards, resulting in a normal belch. This is a normal phenomenon. Supragastric belching. Supragastric belching results from air being sucked in from the mouth and into the esophagus, i.e. it arises from superior to the stomach. This arises when an initial physiological reflex to clear an unpleasant sensation from the distal esophagus becomes a semi-habitual action. The diaphragm contracts downwards, creating negative pressure within the esophagus. This sucks air into the esophagus. In many cases, air does not enter the stomach, but rather moves up and down within the esophagus, causing chest discomfort before it is rapidly pushed back out of the esophagus as a belch. This can happen many times a day and can have major impact on the lives of patients. In some cases, the air in the esophagus can also mimic food or fluid, causing the lower esophageal sphincter to relax, allowing gastric contents and acid to reflux into the lower esophagus, causing irritation and in some cases, inflammation. Research has consistently shown that the best form of treatment for this condition is the diaphragmatic breathing exercise. Rumination syndrome. This is postprandial, or after meals, regurgitation of food that is refractory to treatment with anti-acid therapy in the form of PPI. It is effortless and occurs after most meals, and it may be preceded by a sensation of chest discomfort or pain that is partially relieved by the regurgitation. In severe cases, there may even be an associated weight loss. Similar to supragastric belching, this process is a semi-habitual action likely arising from an initial physiological reflex. Food within the stomach causes gastric distension and triggers an abnormal semi-conscious reflex. The abdominal muscles contract, which increases intra-abdominal pressure. At the same time, there is an abnormal relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter. The pressure within the abdomen then overcomes the lower esophageal sphincter causing gastric content to reflux upwards into the esophagus and into the mouth. Food is then spat out or swallowed. This is different to vomiting, which is forceful expulsion of gastric contents out of the mouth. Once again, research has shown that diaphragmatic breathing is effective in treating rumination syndrome. Refractory reflux. Some people may have minor amounts of acid and non-acid gastric contents reflux into their esophagus despite anti-acid treatment. This can result in persistent symptoms of heartburn. It can frequently be worsened by belching and relaxations of the lower esophageal sphincter 
that are caused by certain foods or by normal physiological reflexes. Once again, diaphragmatic breathing has been shown to reduce symptoms and decrease the need for treatment with PPI. When to do diaphragmatic breathing. Learn how to do it initially for five minutes, three times a day until you are comfortable with the technique. Then it can be used whenever you are symptomatic or even after a meal before the symptoms develop. It is a discreet, quick, simple and effective way of managing these difficult symptoms. We're now going to demonstrate diaphragmatic breathing. First I'd like you to put one hand on the chest and one hand on the abdomen, inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the mouth, really concentrating on moving that abdomen hand only. So off you go and give it a go, inhale and exhale. So as you see you move the chest hand not the abdomen hand, so this time we're going to concentrate on moving that abdomen hand only. So inhale again through the abdomen there, up, 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 well done and exhale, breathing out through the mouth, bringing that tummy muscles down again, well done. So over time we'll practice inhaling for four seconds, exhaling for four seconds, inhaling for four seconds and exhaling through the tummy again for eight seconds. So let's give that a go. So inhale again, bringing the tummy muscles up, one, two, three, four, and out, one, two, three, four. And again, up, one, two, three, four, and out, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well done. Now that you've mastered the diaphragmatic breathing in the lying position, let's now try it in the sitting up position, which can be used much easier at home or in the office. So firstly, place one hand on the chest again and one hand on the abdomen, really concentrating on moving that abdomen hand only. So whenever you're ready, inhale, one, two, three, four, and exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we'll try this with the hands down, which is much easier to do anywhere you wish. So off you go, inhale, one, two, three, four, and exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well done. We hope you have enjoyed the video and have found the information useful.